Well, it's a hot one today. Temperatures are in the mid 80s. A bit of humidity. And I'm out for my ride in the neighborhood, making my way. I think we're going to go down to Georgetown today. Eh, we might swing over by the White House first just to see what's going on. So guys, we have a very rare weekend here in Washington, D.C. Rare in the sense that the Bidens are actually in town. <laughs> Since January 20th, I think the Biden family has spent only like four or five weekends in Washington, D.C. Uh, I believe it's because this week, um, the Biden, the first family, is heading over to England to meet the Queen of England and uh, Boris Johnson and all the other folks. I think he's also going to NATO meeting. So they're going to take it easy. Uh, the vice president is in town, but tomorrow the vice president is going to Latin America, uh, I guess, to deal with the immigration issues that are ongoing down at the border. So today, pretty quiet. Tomorrow, we'll have some helicopter activity for the vice president. Uh, the first lady is going to New York with Anthony Fauci to visit Brooklyn. Uh, but I don't know how that's going to take place. I don't think maybe they will take Marine One. I've never actually seen a Marine One take off just for the First Lady. That'd be interesting. All right, let's head down Mass Avenue, see what's up. This is the Embassy of Liberia. Their flag looks very much like the American flag. It's easy to mistake it. It just has one star, though, rather than uh, 50. Liberia, as some of you may know, was actually set up as a a colony for freed slaves or somewhere where they're going to dispatch slaves, send them back to Liberia, but that project never really got off the ground beyond the first few trips. Now, the embassy down here, uh, I think it's Nepal. Or I think the Nepal ambassador lives down here on the right. Let's see. One of these houses down here is the Nepalese Listen to those cicadas. Here we go. Yeah, that's the Nepalese ambassador's house, or the embassy of Nepal. That's the actual embassy. So it's not just the ambassador's pad. And then there's another, another embassy back here you guys were asking for. At least one of you was asking me for the other day. And I don't normally go by it because it's on this little side road back here, but we'll swing around today. God, listen to those guys. The cicadas are quite loud back here. That's a modern house. An older house. Okay. Let's see if we can cross over. Here we go. So this is the Embassy of Azerbaijan, if I remember. I think that's the Azerbaijani flag. So the Azerbaijan Embassy is hidden back here on this little side street, back across from the Norwegian Chancery and Ambassador's Residence, and behind the yard of the Vatican Embassy, where they can go out for little walks we're not dealing with the protesters who are out front of the Vatican Embassy. <laughs> and then straight ahead is the entrance to the Vice President's house. It's 3.57.09 at the time of filming. I don't know what time you guys are watching this, but that is the U.S. Naval Observatory master clock. Hmm, bit of a motorcade setting up over there. I wonder where they're going tonight. Uh, there's your Vatican Embassy. And this is the Embassy of Finland. Hey, let's check out their library. Let's see if they got any new Scandinavian crime. Oh, all the books are pretty much gone. They got a couple. Jack let's see what they got. So the Finnish embassy will uh, put out works by Finnish authors to also support the. Uh, and that's in Finnish. Also support the Finnish-speaking community here in Washington but also to introduce some of their authors to American readers. So you can stop by these libraries and grab works by uh, 
authors from the different countries. It's kind of a cool way to meet, uh, to, to discover new authors. I found it at the embassy. So, just flew through a swarm of bugs. Oh yeah, this is the building uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president, has her condominium in. Senator Harris had a condo in this building. I think it's on the market. Technically, she lived there for like one day as vice president before the Secret Service said, no, no, this building is not secure in any way, shape, or form. And they moved, ordered her move to Blair House. Oh, God. Let's catch the yellow. We made it. Not going to make that one. All right, so this is George Washington University Hospital. We're going to cut back behind GW over by the med school and then over towards the White House. So the building that you see there with the curve, that, that used to be George Washington University Hospital. Now it's uh, my doctor's offices or something, but that is the building that Reagan was taken to when Reagan was shot. They then went out and built a brand new hospital across the street, which is the current GW Hospital. But the old building is where Reagan was actually taken and his life was saved. The new building is over here. It's called the Ronald Reagan Institute of Emergency Medicine. Or at least the emergency rooms. I think uh, Dick Cheney also got his heart surgery by a vascular specialist at George Washington. I think this white building is the med school itself. Here on my right is the med school and then on the left is the hospital. Oh, and the subway. Okay, this is going to take us to the White House, and then from the White House we'll go figure out somewhere else to go today. We hiked down here the other day. Remember I was showing you that fire station, that's Engine Company 23. That's the one they've got a problem with, and that the doors, the doors to that fire station are too narrow for modern fire trucks. But the building, the building is historically protected. So you can't just like smash out the front door and put in a new door without going through a whole bunch of paperwork and hearings and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, ongoing dispute. The Law Learning Center, that must be a legal clinic. Because the law school is over here on the other side of this building. And the White House is straight ahead, just a few more blocks. 0.3 miles, it said. Oh, wow. They are gearing up a motorcade. I guess we can't go that way. So, what time is it? 4.13. Hmm. So a motorcade is being formed. I just saw Roadrunner, which is the White House Communication Agency's uh, chief telecommunications vehicle, being brought into position on West Executive Avenue. The road has been closed. And we cannot go near. What is this ambulance doing? Now it's cleared to go in. So West Executive Avenue is up over there behind that flagpole, and that's where the motorcades are formed. What, what park are we at? On your right, excuse me. Yeah, it's up there. And you'll probably turn in there and join the procession. Yep. So we're probably going to see that ambulance a little bit later when we catch up with this motorcade. Pretty day. What a pretty day. Lots of people out on the ellipse. So it is about 4.30 on, a, on the weekend here and church services 
are usually around 5, 5.30. It looks like they're setting up a motorcade. But as this is a non-formal, sort of informal kind of thing, they're not going to block off the roads. They're not going to have the helicopter flying around. It's not going to be that big, big production that we see, well, when he goes to something formal, like, like he went to Arlington Cemetery the other day. So a little bit harder to trace the route exactly which way they're going. I have picked up, though, from pool reporters uh, the route that he takes over to Georgetown, so I kind of know where I should be. We're going to make our way down there now. So we're going to ride up the CNO Canal up to the Georgetown University campus, and we'll, we'll see what we see. Oof. Yeah, this is the Rock Creek Parkway, backed up in traffic as normal on the weekend. And over here is the entrance to the CNO Canal, the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, which is a national park in the heart of Georgetown. It's every lock. Ow. These uh, tree limbs are actually kind of sharp. <laughs> the leaves there were kind of like spiky leaves. Now, the canal's been undergoing repairs for the last few years. It's not back. It's not back to 100% yet. They've got to come through here and thrash out all these weeds that are still in the canal and then raise the water level about eight feet or so. But soon, soon we're expecting they're going to bring back a canal boat. They'll have donkeys pulling the boat through the locks. It's going to be quite nice. They just replaced, just replaced the bridge up here. They replaced the locks here about two years ago. And then they just replaced the bridge, and there's a new boat coming soon. I hear lots of sirens. All right, let's go. Now this part of the canal is not bricked or paved, it's crushed gravel. Thank you. Oh, anytime. And then they were repairing the side of this wall that was coming down. Those of you who watched No Way Out with Kevin Costner, there was a scene where he ran into the Georgetown subway. This was the Georgetown subway, because there isn't actually a Georgetown subway. They just made that building look like it. Oh, there's a low-flying helicopter. Not sure who that is. Medical. Thank you. Now, can I get out of here? I don't remember if I can. Erg. Shoot. This is a dead end for bicycles. Let's see what we can do here. These bikes weigh a bloody ton. Okay. We just came up these steps with this bike that weighs about 100 pounds. <laughs> that was dumb. Dumb but successful. Ooh. That was a bear. Okay. On the list of dumb things I've done, lifting that bike up those stairs is pretty high up there. We're gonna spin up this road a bit, and then we're gonna make our way up to the campus. Unfortunately, I think they're cobblestones up here. Whew. Camera crews are already set up, so I think it's pretty clear to see. And he's coming here. Yeah. Yeah, road's closed. So we just spotted a couple camera crews. There is a police motorcycle, but he's not really in like hyper mode. I did just see a helicopter, but not one I'm used to seeing, a black one. Maybe it's the DHS helicopter. They have one now. So we're gonna head up here. There's a bike rack where we can ditch this bicycle and then come back, come back on foot. And hopefully we'll get a chance to see him disembark his vehicle and head into church because we should be pretty close. 
So this is the campus of Georgetown University. This is the main administration building and sort of the quad over here, a lot of old buildings. I think graduation is like this weekend. So a lot of people are heading out. There's not a lot of kids here though. Not everybody came back. So this guy decided he wanted transformers in front of his house. And he put up these really cool statues made out of like old auto parts. They weigh like a ton or two, but the community said no. Turns out their feet, the feet of the Transformers, is just over the city line. It's technically on public space, so the government has ordered the Transformers removed. He's going to appeal, but who knows what he will. Here we go. Second one. And now we've got to go on the cobblestone streets of Georgetown. Ugh, let's try to try to find the rail in the middle. So all the police cars, I think I've just gone down M. I think there's another bike rack down. God, the line for Georgetown cupcake is mental. It's just a cupcake. It's just a bloody cupcake. So Georgetown Cupcake is a cupcake restaurant popularized by a reality TV show called Georgetown Cupcake. On the Learning Channel, people come from all over to have the cupcakes that they saw on TV. And now Georgetown Cupcake has branches like in New York and Boston or something, I don't know. But, I mean, they're good. I mean, what cupcake isn't good? The only cupcake that's bad is the one that you don't have. But I mean, I wouldn't line up for them. Up here on the right is a tavern called Martin's Tavern. It's been around about 70 years or so. It said this is where John F. Kennedy proposed to his wife. Uh, Bush, Reagan, Carter, Truman, Eisenhower, they all drank here. In fact, uh, some, of their, some of their booths are specifically marked out. You can ask for the Kennedy booth 
or the Truman booth uh, if you come here because they had like a private booth that those guys used all the time. Okay, this is Wisconsin Avenue, kind of the heart of Georgetown. Let's see if we can find a bike rack. All right, so we finished up our little excursion to Georgetown. We saw him coming out of the church. We saw him go in, go out. And when the limo went by, we couldn't really see him. I mean, I went back. Well, you, you'll see. I'll try to blow it up and maybe you guys can see what it looked like. I can see his sunglasses. Barely. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys.